getting pregnant at an older age, specifically if you are starting to approach 40 or getting older. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor. Each week on this channel, we talk about your health, your hormones, your fertility, your body, and try to give you information so that you can understand your body the best and make the decisions that are the best for you. I'm always so appreciative of your support on this channel and would love if you would subscribe, like, share, ask me comment, just help us spread our message. So a couple years ago, when I was turning 40, I made a video and it is how to get pregnant at 40. I was not trying to get pregnant, but it brought about a good question I always get is if I'm older, what should I do? And I recently, two years later, got a comment on that video and it does bring up some points that I wanna address. So that's what we're going to dive in today, talking about can you get pregnant when you're older and what is realistically your chance and how can you help things and what are warning signs? Here's the comment. I believe media and society make you think that it is impossible to be pregnant at 40. I tried one time last month when I was fertile and I'm now pregnant at 40 naturally. Yes, it might be more complications, but the majority of babies are born healthy. Also, I believe there is an economic agenda to push women to freeze their eggs before 40 and go to fertility clinics. If you're meant to have children, you will no matter your age. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here in just this one comment. First of all, I just wanna say congratulations. If you're trying to get pregnant and you did, and I am so happy for you because it is a medical fact that it is harder to get pregnant as you get older. Now, this is population-based data, and that's what we take to understand our own individual rate. And what do statistics do? They are a guide for setting our road of expectations. But even if the number is very low, some people are going to get pregnant in the first month. And so congratulations you got to be one of those people. I actually disagree. So we're gonna go through the points. Point number one, media and society make you think that it's impossible to be pregnant at 40. I actually feel like media and society makes you think that you can be pregnant older. We have so many examples of celebrities who are conceiving well into their 50s without any transparency about if it was their own eggs or they froze eggs or donor eggs. They don't owe us anything. They don't need to tell us how or the why. But it does, for a lot of my patients, give the illusion that our fertility can be extended much later than it actually does. So I don't think that society or media tells people that it's impossible to get pregnant. You tried and you got pregnant the first time, and I'm so excited. One big differentiating factor if you're trying to get pregnant at age 40 is going to be, did you have kids before? Have you ever had a child? Or is this your first time trying? This data comes from what we call fecundability data, and a lot of it comes from my fellowship mentor, Ann Steiner. Ann Steiner is a reproductive endocrinologist like I am, and I did all of my fellowship research with her. She created one of the best prospective cohorts of women who are actively trying to conceive. A lot of our early fertility data actually came from just looking at populations and asking women who had had a baby how long did it take you to get pregnant? And one of the huge issues with that is there's so much bias because what about all the women who didn't get pregnant, who are not included? And what about the recall bias of the people who might not remember exactly how long it took? So the Time to Conceive study is a prospective cohort that followed women who were actively trying to conceive. And some of them had had a child before, which is called Paris. And some of them had never had a child and that's called nulliparous. And it categorized women into age groups and looked at the odds of conceiving per month, which is what fecundability is, not your overall chances. Does your chance in a single month of attempt? So it's your fertile window, you're having intercourse, what's the chance? And these are all people who were actively trying, they were tracking their cycles, there was no intervention, but they did record data on having intercourse and when their cycle came. So the people who weren't having periods regularly or who weren't actually having intercourse could be excluded from the study. In this, we saw that once you approach age 30 and beyond, your fertility starts to decrease, but it's actually different for the two groups. So if we compare your fertility rate to your monthly fecundability, monthly chance of pregnancy, if you're ovulating and you're having intercourse, if you're under age 30, it's going to be about 25. In the group that is just trying to start trying to get pregnant for the very first time, 
your chance if you're 30 to 33 is going to be about 17 to 19% per month. So still pretty good. If I compare that to the group that's had a baby before, it's about 22, 23%. So definitely higher, but not very different. If you're now 35, 36, 37, it's your first time, you're looking at an 11 to 12% chance per month. But if you're in the group that's had a baby before, you're still hanging out at 16 to 22%. So still relatively good. Once you get to age 38, 39, if you've never had a child before, you now have a 5% chance per month. But if you have had a child before, it's 16 to 17%. And then once you approach 40, if you've never had a child, it's 3% chance per month. If you've had a child, it's going to be 9 to 10%. So without a doubt, Having had a prior child is going to give you a higher chance of pregnancy per month. But regardless of if the number is 3% or if the number is 9 to 10%, somebody's getting pregnant in month one. So congratulations. I'm happy that it's you. However, if you're living in a 3% group, how long are you going to give until it happens? And are you actually going to be able to conceive in that time? That's a big concern of ours and why we recommend an earlier evaluation the older you are when you're starting your family. Going back to our comment, it might be more complications, but the majority of babies are born healthy. That's true on both ends. You do have a higher risk of complications as you get older. These include preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, higher risk of C-section, of growth restriction. But most of the babies are born healthy, meaning the risk of miscarriage is much higher and the risk of genetic abnormalities is higher than when you are younger, but of all the babies that actually get to be born, most of them are healthy. That is a true statement. But if you're age 40 and you're trying to get pregnant, because the eggs have been in your body now 40 years, your chance of miscarriage is double that of what it was when you were 25. So that's a huge difference. It's harder to get pregnant. It's harder to stay pregnant. And a lot of this all centers around egg quality, which is the genetic normalcy inside our eggs. And sometimes these two numbers do not have time to come together and result in a live birth. As you start to run out of eggs, as the quality worsens, as the chance is harder month to month, at some point, many people are left without a child, especially without further intervention. Is there an economic agenda to push women to freeze their eggs before 40? Well, absolutely. If you want to freeze your eggs, 40 is too late. So it's going to be much more successful the younger you are, especially if you're under age 35. If you know you want kids and you're not ready, all the data we have supports that freezing your eggs is keeping a door of opportunity open. The statement of the comment that is really just makes me angry and probably does for most people is if you're meant to have children, you will no matter your age because I have so many patients across all ages who are doing everything within their power and they're not all able to have a child. And to insinuate that you could have a child naturally no matter your age is so harmful for people who carry genetic abnormalities, have blocked fallopian tubes, have had surgeries or infections whose partner doesn't have sperm or doesn't have much sperm, for somebody who's running out of eggs and wants to preserve their fertility or somebody who has cancer. There's so many different scenarios where somebody might need intervention and if they didn't, they would not be able to have a child. And so saying that those people were not meant to have children, that comment upsets me. Overall, if you are wanting to get pregnant and you are older, you can't roll back the clock. So what can you do? Living a healthy lifestyle, tracking your cycles even before you're ready, and getting an early fertility evaluation, making sure your uterus fallopian tubes are open, making sure that there is sperm, and understanding your ovarian reserve. Talking to your partner and your doctor about your goals for your family size will allow you to optimize your time to conceive the best. Not every patient who walks in my office does fertility treatments. Some get testing and go on and conceive naturally. Some need IVF to conceive and there's no way they would have a family without it. So if you get older and you want to have fertility testing at age 40, I recommend you test before you even start trying to get pregnant because we would rather know and be able to make decisions on that data. If you've got questions about getting older, I do have this video to watch about some of my tips and tricks, but also Let's ask questions below and help you understand your fertility, even as you age a little bit more. As always, you can get more information on the As a Woman podcast or on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.